Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRicker.com here, and it's time for another wind test, this time with the Skydio 2. Uh, now, typically in these wind tests, I stay put, and then I fly the drone far away and then come back again. But this time it's different. This time, we're going with the drone. Now, the reason you buy a Skydio 2 is purely for sports tracking, so we're gonna do that. Uh, now, I will apologize if the audio is bad. I've got a ton of mics here, uh, but once I get going, we're pretty much relying on three different GoPro mics to hopefully make this all work. Now, the conditions right now are sustained in between 24 and 26 miles per hour, so sustained 40 kilometers an hour, gusting to 50 kilometers an hour, uh, or just over 30 miles per hour, as is measured by this, as well as the official wind speed thing, which is on the end of the pier right here. Uh, so it's, it's hollowing out here. Uh, the wind direction is mostly behind me coming this way. Uh, so on the way out, we're gonna be a bit slow, and on the way back, we should be, uh, should be screaming. Starting up the engines, getting ready. Here we go, take off. It's a bit tough with the wet hands here. And up we go, so far so good. I'm gonna turn it around and find me. Go back a little bit more. There you go, you can see it's got that uh, little blue dot on it with a plus, which means it's found me there. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it over to the side over here. Keep it on my left hand side. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is that I don't want the wind, the, the waves to hit it, because that would, that would probably end this test pretty darn quickly here. Now going into the wind, I'm gonna tell it to go on my left hand side. There we go. Now maybe a quick primer on how Skydio drones work, since they are a little bit different than like DJI drones or other drones in the marketplace. The main thing that Skydio does, their main claim to fame is autonomous flying. Uh, I'm not controlling this drone at all. The fact that I have a phone on my handlebars is merely for me to control which camera angle I want and how far away from me I want it. But it doesn't actually track from that phone. Instead, it's recognizing me as an object. And you see that little blue swirly thing going around me? That means it sees me as an object to track. And since I tapped that blue dot earlier and made it a swirly, it's now tracking me. Now the challenge with this is that right now there are six cameras on board the Skydio drone that's for tracking and then a seventh that's actually filming me. So once those cameras get more and more salt spray and more and more rain on them, it becomes an issue because at that point it can no longer distinguish what's me and what's this giant raindrop right there. And that's where it's important to separate issues that may arise from rain and sea spray on the lens from just pure wind based issues. That's why I went ahead and I just waited a second for this little rain squall to pass. In fact, you can see that clearing up ahead there uh, coming towards me. And so this is why I have three batteries to go through so we get away from some of this rain and sea spray over the next couple batteries worth of runs. By the way, now's a great time to note if you're finding this video useful, interesting, and entertaining or something, just simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. That is a poor life choice to be on that side of the wall. On that side. Over. Okay. Let's see if I can do this now. There we go. Now we're talking. getting rid of the glasses those are officially totally useless second pushing that range out a little bit now I feel like we got to do this again. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to dig into. For example, in this Introduction to Aerial Videography class from Wild Rabbit, a drone production company based in LA, they cover all the nuances on the best camera maneuvers to use and their shooting best practices when doing blockbuster film and TV production work for all their own clients. There's also this drone video masterclass by Tom Veld, where you'll learn about details such as color theory and color grading your drone footage, as well as aspects like data file management for drone video production. That's particularly useful for me since this total base content for this video here was over 700 gigabytes. 
No matter the class you choose, there's no ads on Skillshare. They're always launching new premium classes, and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. But the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. This time now, we're gonna put it on the right side. And again. And at this point, a couple quick things I want you to note uh, is first of all, the rain earlier meant that the lenses of the camera were covered, both the uh, obstacle avoidance lenses as well as the camera lens. Uh, and on top of that, the salt spray coming off the waves was also getting on there. It was now also drawing on the lenses, which is why you see that it just looks a lot darker on there as well as looking uh, a bit more speckled. So I wanted to bring the drone back to the starting point to not only swap out the battery for some longer runs, but to go ahead and clean off all the lenses as well. By the way, despite this, it tracked perfectly fine all the way back. And you'll notice when you have 70 km an hour winds, it doesn't take very long for that cloud cover to disappear once the sun wants to come out. You'll notice from both the landing and then subsequent takeoff, it's super clean and stable. There's no wonkiness or wobbling around. It just does exactly what you expect it to do. Up in the air, perfect. We're gonna bring the height down a little bit. We're gonna make this exciting. We're not gonna have no like boring video here. Hey, it's a seagull. No, 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 leave my drone alone, seagull. Oh, nay. Now, when we look at drones with obstacle avoidance, there's basically three different speeds that they kind of top out at. Number one speed is what is the fastest that they can recognize obstacles at? Uh, and that's really the main driver for the Skydio 2, and that's 36 miles an hour. So anything higher than that, it can't recognize the obstacles fast enough. Now, here, there's really no obstacles, so no issues with that. The next is the max wind speed, which tends to impact things like the camera gimbals most of the time. And then the third speed is the overall max airspeed. So it's the fastest that the aircraft can fly, inclusive of any wind. And that's the one that we're probably coming actually up against the most here in just a second. Now at this point, things get a little bit wobbly, and then they get a lot wobbly, and then it loses me from a tracking standpoint. And I'm unsure if this was the drone itself that was wobbling, or if it was just the camera gimbal, which would be much more common. Having tested a lot of drones out here on this particular pier, it's this area where it starts to curve really sharply, where I see the strongest winds. Keep in mind, it was measured at gusts over 70 kilometers an hour by the time I got home that day for this particular time period. Now, after it finished losing me, it was really nice and stable. So I reinitialized the tracking and got on to my ride again. You get kerplunked on that side. I promise you, you're gonna get kerplunked. Oh, tower. I told you not to go there. See if we have to increase the range. <laughs> okay, I'm bringing it back. Oh, that is wet. I am underwater. This bike's gonna need some love afterwards here. But it's tracking me. Okay, I'm gonna put it off to my right this time. So at this point, I decided to actually reset again. And one thing I wanted to change here was to lock the screen on my phone so that it wasn't going ahead and having the rain uh, and the sea spray and all the water from my gloves interacting with the drone control, telling it to do things, which I saw was causing some issues. And so stay tuned, because this is probably like the best part drone footage of the entire video. So there we go, a complete look at the Skydio 2 uh, in high wind action. I'd say by and large, no real issues when I didn't have the screen on. When I had the screen on, uh, the waves, the water and everything on it just kept on telling the Skydio to do something else, kept on thinking it was being tapped. But once I turned that off, uh, then it's no problems at all. I can turn it back on and gain control as I will in a second to land this thing. But 
Uh, overall, wind was not a problem out here at all for this. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, simply whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.